So my name is Felix. I'm from Montreal, Canada, but I just moved here about seven months ago. So it's a true delight to be in this uh, sacred land. And uh, hopefully I will try to um, share a bit of this amazement through images. So this is meant to be a visual poem. So I'll provide just minimal descriptions, uh, almost no statistics and you know geeky stuff. So hopefully uh, you will enjoy. Uh, when you look at these pictures, try to, to remember what you know about these things that you see and also try to identify what you don't know and what you ought to be learning and you know, to discover. So I'm the founder of Globaya and we've made these uh, pictures that I'm about to see, uh, to, to present to you. So first image, perhaps to present uh, a bit in context what water and air plays in as a role in the Earth system, in our planet. So if we take in all the water that is present in our bodies, in rivers, in lakes, underground, in oceans, of course, in the clouds, it would make a bubble that size at scale. So this is all there is. And same for the air, everything that we breathe around us and in us. So it's just to provide some context about, you know, when we talk about acidifying oceans and climate change, well, this is the, the, the small pieces that were starting to alter quite heavily. All the rivers and the planet, and also you can see the cities. So this image is extremely high resolution, so we could zoom, uh, but we won't zoom this time, but happy to talk and to show off some stuff after, if you want. But, you know, this is really the, the veins of our planet and a few, you know, close-up views. You can see here the northern India and Bangladesh and the Himalayas and Tibet in the north. So an amazing networks and we all depends on this, on this. So hundreds of millions of people are depending on these waters. The mighty Amazon Basin, so quite an amazing place. I've personally never visited it physically. I've been there many times virtually, but like you, I guess. But this is such a, such a jewel of galactic or cosmic significance. Uh, I'm going quick on these pictures because time is running quick and I have so much to present. So these are the coral reefs, uh, all the coral reefs. So you, you've seen the the, the Great Barrier Reef in, in Australia, but all those coral reefs in New Caledonia and Papua New Guinea. So such amazing places for life under sea. The Antarctica. Do we say Antarctica or Antarctic, by the way? Uh, I'm a French Canadian, so <laughs> my English is still improving. So all the colors, you can see the, the, the ice flowing through, the, through the, the ocean and obviously because of climate change this is, we could expect that this is getting yellower and, and redder because this is happening fast. The Arctic, the other region and all the boreal forests, the biggest forest in the world. So we've become a powerful force of, you know, planetary significance and importance. Uh, this is what we may call the anthroposphere, so all the cumulative impacts that we have. So we can see the shipping lanes, all the transport network on lands and in the air. You can see the transmission lines, the cities, of course, uh, roads unpaved and paved. Uh, this is a view that I quite like, but this might be more in tune with <laughs> where the, we are. and. You know, th there's no way, you know, north should be up. We, we have to challenge these geographic projections, Eurocentric. <laughs> I mean, they have their historical importance, but we have to shift how we see the world. And so maps is a good way to do that. So all the cities based on population you can really see New York and Chicago and Mexico City and Los Angeles, these big cities. Same for Europe. So nothing new here, but just different ways to look at things that we know. So if, if we were looking at you know, Asia from space, we would see something like that. But when we put population and light pollution, we see a different picture. So 
population here is the, the blue areas, and the purple is, is the light pollution. Can you see uh, South Korea, for example? It's a very bright country, and then you can see Pyongyang, just a small dot, in a very otherwise populous, populated country. And you can see also the squid fishing. So th these are the, 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 the green lights underwater to attract squid. So this is visible from space, believe it or not. So we've become a powerful force. I mean, we, we should, I should say, perhaps the thermal industrial civilization. We should not include everyone in the big, uh, you know, impacts and very detrimental impacts that we are having on the biosphere. But as humans, we've become a dominant force. This is the CO2 emissions in the world. So everything here is not clouds, it's not dust, it's CO2 emission, you know, swirling around. So, um, yeah, CO2 emissions, you can see this coming from cities and forest fires. And, of course, China is going through a very heavy industrial age. But you can see that we're on one planet. This is flowing through frontiers, borders, rivers, oceans. So, we are one. And this is just a few days. So, if you're looking, you can see some pulsations. So, this is days and night. So, during nighttime, some CO2 is, uh, is released, is absorbed, sorry. So, you can see the east coast of North America quite heavily emitting. So, this was just a, a quick teaser. And that's it. Welcome to planet Earth. So all those spikes here are the power plants. The higher the spike, more CO2 emission it has. It's emitting in the atmosphere, and the red colors are obviously heavy emissions. Fishing efforts, all those uh, pale blue lights in the seas are vessels fishing from, for fish. Look around Iceland, for example. And you can see the exclusive economic, economic zones. So these are pockets where sometimes fishing vessels cannot go. Uh, these are all the rivers, but these spikes are the, the amount of plastic emitted by rivers into the ocean. So the Brahmaputra, uh, Brahmaput, let's say it in French, Brahmaputra, uh, river is, is the biggest uh, plastic emitter in the planet in Bangladesh. So another view for... Indonesia. Deforestation is happening. I'm sorry to bring some bad news, but this is all forested, deforested areas between 2000 and 2012. The same for South America. So we really have to wake up or to start understanding what's happening at a deeper level. We know quite a lot but we don't believe enough of what we know. This is biodiversity richness, all the species of birds, amphibians, mammals. You can see that the hotspots of biodiversity are in the uh, tropics. In red here are the wild places. And then you have all the protected areas. And the purple are the high biodiversity areas. So those places that are not protected, but th that we should protect, it, protect because they are so important for life. So right now, about 15% of lands is under protection and 17 of national waters. But, you know, this is not enough. We should protect at least half the planet. So this is a very bold idea. So 30 seconds left. I'll be quick. I just want to show you. Uh, this is a work that I've, we've been doing with the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation. This is called One Earth. So it's a visualization of what the planet could look like if we protected half of it. So I could uh, explain the details if you're interested later today. But this is uh, really uh, something that is, brings hope. And so we have different scenarios for the future. We could decide to apply sustainable principles in a, in a very serious way. And this is what the planet may look like in terms of human impact by 2032. But we have different scenarios. So if we go policy first, I don't see if you saw the little change, but we, the, the human impacts become uh, more important. 
So if we put security first, this is another scenario, uh, which is heavier on walls and building, building infrastructure to protect the wealthy from the poor regions. This is not the world I want. And then market first is the world we're in right now. This is the trajectory, the business as usual. And so we have to fight this. We have to bring this to the sustainability, sustainability first world. This is a bit naive, but this is my way to convey the message. So we have to harmonize the way we think about the world with the planetary home world we live in. But we have to believe what we know. I just said that we know enough. We have to believe. We have to bring that to the heart level. We have to, to shift our minds. And we have to care about what we believe, because sometimes we believe, but we just don't care. So please, let's do that together. Um, we have not reached peak wisdom, so there's a lot of work to do. Thank you very much. <laughs>